Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. We've got huge stories going on in wireless. Just going to give you guys these updates. We'll keep them short and sweet, and then I'll leave the analysis kind of towards the end of each. And, uh, of course, you guys can comment at any time on any of these items that I cover today. So the first story, uh, wireless home Internet service providers are touting six-mile range for CBRS Spectrum. This is phenomenal news. Their speeds look like they're going to really surprise a lot of people. I know this actually has surprised me based on a couple of factors. So CBRS is a 3.5 gigahertz frequency. It's a mid-band frequency that uh, will be deployed on uh, a low power transmission. This is obviously a limiting factor. The lower the power, the more limited the range. So uh, it can only reach so far in terms of distance as the range increases as well we're gonna see signal quality degrade and speed slow down. So several Midwest states are testing and they are showing amazing results. In fact, I think they're actually overachieving based on expectations. Some are showing six mile range and still achieving 100 megabit per second speeds. That is incredible. Now in terms of how they're setting things up, the height of the sites are placed somewhere between 200 to 250 feet, which is very, very high. Um, the setting is in rural America, obviously, so maybe those limitations are less of an issue. Amplex Internet, an Ohio-based provider, is showing two to four mile range with clear line of sight. So some of the limitations we've assumed about CBRS are now kind of being pushed to the side and under the correct conditions are showing a lot of promise. Capacity for 100 plus customers on a single base station, and this is only five to 10 megahertz channels. CBRS obviously has multiple use applications. There's a general access segment of this spectrum, and that's open to, to anyone to utilize any company, as well as PALs, which are licensed, which were just auctioned. Both can be combined by wireless providers as well. So they can widen the channels with these two applications. They can aggregate or combine the channels to increase the bandwidth for speed and capacity. Really, the possibilities are endless. So uh, customer antennas will likely have to be placed 20 to 30 feet up where they're going to be receiving the signal in mounting. And uh, But they are saying that it's effective even at just 15 feet. Really encouraging. I think this is great for rural America. This is great for the technology, and it shows a lot of promise for CBRS. A lot of things we thought were limiting factors appear like they may have some answers for those issues. So I'm super excited about that. Give me a comment down in the comment section about that story. Transitioning over to story two, this is from Light Reading, courtesy of Mike Dano. Starlink's network faces significant limitations. Analysts find. All right, so these... This is actually kind of disappointing news. So uh, the soon to commercially launch satellite internet service provider is dropping, uh, you know, appears to be dropping a cold towel on us inadvertently. The limitations, it's only going to be able to support 485,000 simultaneous users with a steady 100 megabit per second connection across the US. In terms of a timeline, this should be happening around 2026. So really about, you know, five years and some change from now. So. Obviously, the limitation here is simply the number of satellites that are going to be deployed. We're talking about 12,000 units at that time. Currently, there's only 650 deployed now and are operating. Obviously, this allows or gives home ISPs a little bit of room to breathe and offers them a sigh of relief. Um, you know, satellite expectations, maybe we'll see about 4,400 by 2024 and 12,000 by 2026. Each satellite can aggregate speeds between 17 to 23 gigs per second. Each satellite theoretically could provide 200 simultaneous streams of 100 megabits per second. Unfortunately, you know, you think about this was supposed to be a game changer for more than just some people, more than just rural America, more than just even America. But, um, you know, it looks like, um, you know, the pandemic implications, obviously, this kind of sucks. People would like to get the service available to them. Obviously, I think I, you know, there's some people should get priority on this connection. I think of, you know, students and school from home. I think rural America, low income consumers. I really hope that, you know, whoever does get access to this, it is based on that priority. So even if it is subsidized or there's some programs to help people, 
you know, if, if you have good home internet providers, maybe this just isn't for you. Uh, but again, like I said, I think a lot of people want this connection. Let me know what you think of this news, if it's disappointing, or maybe it's just a matter of time until things really get going for them. You know, I guess it's always best to exercise patience. But again, you know, it does kind of put a dampening on the situation. Go ahead and drop me a line. Let me know what you think of that story. And the last one, big news out of T-Mobile. They're going to carry and sell and have a special on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. They're going to do an On Us special, a 24 monthly bill credit. You'll have to add a line if you're an existing company, uh, customer, or switch. Or you can get 500 bucks off of any Samsung when trading in an eligible device. Uh, I think even when doing the trade-in, they're going to do it on bill credits as well. Pre-orders are, are of September 25th. Remember that you can get all 5G access with this device. So that's N71, 600 megahertz. That's N41, 2.5 gigahertz. So it is future-proof. Basically, it's a mid-model or a mid-year refresh of the S20 Plus. It does retail at $699. T-Mobile's good old $700 financing ceiling being shown there. All right, so here are the eligible trade-ins you could do to get this phone on us from T-Mobile. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to take a look at that. It might be worth it to switch to get that phone. And um, yeah, you know, I don't know. It's 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 a good deal, I guess, if you're looking at getting that type of a phone. But I think getting so close to the new year with the new X60 chip, it may be something to hold off on. Just something to think about. I thought I'd throw this out there. Let me know what you think of this deal and this phone. Go ahead and actually give me some feedback on any of the stories from today. Um, you know, the voice of the people, the SMT Nation, let your voice be heard. Thank you all for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video and found it informative, please do rate this video. Give it a thumbs up. Share it to all your favorite social media platforms. If you are new, first time here, consider subscribing. Activate that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. And do check out some of the links in the description box. There's ways to donate. We have the link to the SMT Patreon page, the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech, where we also do Periscope Lives. And here are some other videos that I did hand select for you all to check out if you're not ready to leave the SMT YouTube channel just yet. Anyways, again, thank you for being here to watch. I am the SMT. Have a great rest of the day, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.